The purpose of this video is to identify the greatest male tennis player of the Open Era. In the five decades or so that I have been a tennis fan, there have been many greats. Everyone has their sentimental favorite. But objectively speaking, who's the greatest? I believe the answer lies in the data. In my opinion, the greatest is a function of career longevity, dominance over peers, versatility of game on different court surfaces, popularity with fans, and most importantly, tournament results. Let's start with longevity. Who has been ATP number one ranked player for the longest time in history? It's Roger Federer. Next, let's see title span. Title span is the duration between the first title and the last title won by a player. Roger wins this too. Then we look at Grand Slam entries and Roger wins yet again. Now let's look at dominance. In wins against top 5 ranked players, Roger leads but Novak is at his heels. Then we see points dominance. This is the ratio of return points won to service points lost. Roger inches past Rafa to the top. Similarly, games dominance is the ratio of return games won to service games lost. The top three are very close with Roger leading the group. So how does this translate to match wins? The data show that Rafa, Novak and Borg are actually a step above Roger in this category. Now the real dilemma, how do we compare players across different eras? What would happen if Nadal were to play Borg at the French Open? For it to be an even contest, they would both need to be in their physical prime, play on the same surface, and have the same racket and training technology. Since this is not possible, the next best thing we can do is to see how great players perform in their prime. So what is a male tennis player's prime? It turns out that there is a lot of scientific research done on this topic. Based on some leading studies, it is reasonable to consider a male tennis player's prime to be between the ages of 23 and 26. Consequently, let's look at Grand Slam results of players in their prime. Here we see Roger asserts his dominance. However, when we look at total titles won across all tournaments, Connors nudges past Roger. Next we move to versatility. For this, we look at titles won on different court surfaces. And we see that Roger has succeeded more evenly across different court surfaces than Connors or Lendl. Roger also exhibits greater versatility than Rafa and Novak. Now let's look at players' popularity. Frankly, this is impossible to quantify, so I have used social media followers as a proxy for popularity. Roger is marginally ahead on Facebook. However, Rafa wins this parameter based on his Twitter and Instagram fan base. And finally, we get to results. Grand Slam title wins is the most cited measure of a player's greatness. Roger leads this group. But can Rafa catch up at Roland Garros 2020? Next, we see total carrier titles and Connors leads here. Does Roger have time to surpass his record? Finally, we look at tour final titles. This is the end of the season tournament where only the top eight ranked players of the year are invited to play. 
you could say that it is a competition of the best of the best and once again roger leads the group so who is the greatest of all time we have looked at data across the parameters of longevity dominance versatility popularity and results the data does confirm that the greatest male tennis player of all time is Roger Federer. Do you agree with these findings? Are there any additional factors that should have been considered for this analysis? Please let me know what you think via the comment section. I welcome your feedback and suggestions.